Hey everybody, I'm Mark Jackson. Coming up on Sports Central, wow, we've got a great show. Bob Donahue from the City of Lakeland Parks and Rec Department, actually the director, and then Danny Walker, state champion, well, really a coach, but he was a wrestler. Check out this edition of Sports Central. Coming up next. Hey everybody and welcome to Sports Central. I'm Mark Jackson. To my right, no, that's not Neil Duncan. No, that's not Hank Longo. <laughs> this is our new star. Where the heck are you from originally, by the way? Jacksonville. I'm Jacksonville, East. Florida. Worked with you for how long and you still don't know I'm from I didn't know that. I just keep thinking of you from St. Pete, but that's where your fiance that's, lives. Yeah, that's where I live now. Yeah, yep, there I am. Fiance, Saint right? Mm, yep, fiance just recently. Will you never learn? I know. I, I guess not. <laughs> they say that to me, too. <laughs> <laughs> this is Sam Baker, everybody, and glad to have you aboard. And, of course, uh, for those of you that listen to our sister show, our ugly sister show, no, just kidding. Out of that, that's um, why I'm on radio. On WLKF <laughs> Radio from 5 to 6 o'clock on Thursdays, actually one of the most popular radio shows in all of Central Florida, uh, you'll hear Sam Baker and his uh, expert color commentary and so on. So today it's Sam Baker, and we'll be seeing more of him in the future. You will, too. Yeah, they're calling me up out of the big leagues. But before we get too far, uh, Hilton Garden Inn of Lakeland, very thankful for them for sponsoring this segment of Sports Central. Love having this guy on our show, okay? Because it's, he comes kicking, screaming, you know, we literally have to send cops over to pick him up, handcuff him, and bring him to the studio. His name, Mr. Bob Donahue, and the director of Lakeland Parks and Recreation, and a guy that has probably made more of a difference in the last couple of years uh, in that entire program, that department, than 10 years prior. It's just been a Thank huge you. transformation. And uh, those changes have all been good, Bob. And, and one of the things that you did have to take over that was uh, uh, one of the things Bill Tinsley uh, right. skillfully was involved in, and that just happened to be the relationship with the Tigers. You know, you're carrying on a tradition of more than 80 years and that's a huge weight, seamless. This thing has gone better than it, I think it ever has. Thank you. So, but an exciting season. And yes, we're having a season this year. Yes, we are. Uh, for those of you who forgot, Mar uh, March 13th of last year is when spring training ended uh, due to COVID and they, everything ended that day. There was no more practices, no more, everybody went home, everybody got sent home, <laughs> stadium was locked down and came back later for an abbreviated spring with just players only, and then they played, of course, in a bubble, you know, between Toledo and Detroit. Um, this year, we're excited. We have fans back in the stands again. We have hot dog vendors. We have, I mean, so strawberries. Whatever, it, Is Linda know, doing it, the strawberries again? Yes, we are. <laughs> okay. Linda, Linda, uh, strawberry shortcake with Linda Brown from Dairy Queen. Uh, all those things are returning. Uh, it's going to be different. Uh, two thousand people in the stands. Our stand, our stadium actually seats eight thousand. We'll have two thousand in the stadium. We'll have 50% in the larger party areas, 75% in the suites, and we're going to make a decision about sell, selling uh, a, 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 what we call standing room only, SROs, tickets, three to 400 possibly, you know, for each game. Mm -hmm. So if somebody comes up to the stadium. Now, exciting for us is, you know, good for us and somewhat not so good is that we put tickets went on sale yesterday and a lot of other spring training sites when we were talking to them, theirs was going rather slowly. We sold out in three hours. Wow. So we're going to look for today's meeting that we're having today at 1.30, looking for other opportunities for our fans to be able to still get inside our stadium uh, for spring training. So, you know, obviously we want to take care of our local residents, folks from Polk County, and we want to take care of our out-of-state residents. We, you know, if they come down from Michigan or somewhere up north, we'd like to get them into our stadium because we don't want to lose our fan base because our fan base will be back hopefully at 100% next year. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we're excited about all of that transpiring. Yes, it is a little bit different. Your hot dog is not going to be in a little boat. It's going to be in a, in a plastic container. You know, we, we have protocols that we're going to follow to make it safe for our fans so they feel confident coming in. Yeah. So like I say, it, it's, it's a little twist. It's a challenge, which is kind of cool. I kind of like that. You know, whatever makes you think outside the box. Uh, but it's exciting, and we're excited to have spring training again in Lakeland. Yeah. 
I think it just goes to show too just the appreciation that people have that we are finally able to continue sports and and they've been waiting for this this long time to finally get back in the stands and just the fact that you know three hours those tickets are gone you know people are ready to get out there and and explore and and, and see these games safely obviously but uh, it, it's really it's it's so great to see that this is finally coming oh without a shadow of a doubt I mean like I say it's just we have a gorgeous stadium our stadium was voted the top stadium in the Grave Food League for spring training the last two years in a row. That's unheard of. That means little old Lakeland is competing against the Red Sox, against the Yankees, against the Nationals, against the Astros. Folks have spent a lot more money on their complex than we did. And it tells you that we maximize our dollars. People love coming to our stadium. And it just makes you feel good about being in Polk County. And that's what it's all about. Well, it's, you know, it's all about the experience. And, and Bob, I know you, you, you stay in tune to this pretty well because you're up in Detroit. You know, like we are, and sometimes we're up there together. Yes, we are. You know, uh, developing and uh, nurturing that relationship with the Tigers. But in the month of February and March, 4.2% of all the visitors that come into Polk County are from the state of Michigan. So it is a huge economic engine, not to mention the economic engine of, of the uh, stadium, what's happening at Publix Field, and the entire Tiger Town. It's like I say, we're, we're extremely excited. You know, as Mark alluded to, too, you know, when we have a normal spring training, that's over $55 million for our local economy in Polk County. So to us, it's a, that's huge for our economy. And like I say, and, and people don't realize, uh, yesterday morning, I was walk, driving up to the stadium to, to take care of a few things. And I looked over, there's a Today Show, just an impromptu spot from the front of the stadium. Didn't ask, didn't whatever, just showed up and did their spot, yeah. which was cool. Yeah. And people don't realize the notoriety you get from having a spring training site is that every time there's a press release that goes out, you look at the press release, the first two words in the, in the sentences is Lakeland, Florida. That's what you get. People know and they equate that. Lakeland, Florida, Polk County, Florida, that puts us on the map all over the United States. So for us, it's huge, whatever, for, for, our, for our area. Yeah. And I love it. Like I say, we're, if we're doing good and every other city in Polk County is doing good, that's what matters. And you kind of mentioned a little earlier just the, the long-standing tradition of the Tigers being in Lakeland and that, that just th this long stretch of time they've been here. But this year, obviously going to be completely different game-wise. What's going to be different about, you know, uh, you know, guys showing up, length of games, who's going to be in there? It's going to be a completely different type of experience now. We're entering our 85th year. We have the longest relationship between any professional sports uh, franchise in Major League Baseball in the city, which is unheard of. 85 years is incredible. Okay, now how's that going to change? Is right now in camp, we have pitchers and catchers in. We have AAA and Major League. Double A on down, double A, single A, high A, low A. They won't report until April. So what happens is, is when you start coming to spring games early in the spring, is that pitchers' arms aren't very well stretched out. So they pull up a lot of guys from out back from the minor leagues to come up and pitch. And that's when you get number 88 and 79 <laughs> and whatever. You get those guys that should be have, have uh, numbers that are offensive tackles, whatever. <laughs> so you get that group to come up. Well, now that inventory of players isn't there. So it's going to be strictly AAA in the major leagues. And you have only have so many arms in camp. So what happens is probably our first week or so, our games will probably be seven innings, five to seven innings. Uh, when the two managers get th together before the game, it's going to be like Little League Baseball. How many innings can you got to fit? How many innings you got? And they're going to decide whether it's five or seven that day. Because when you play every day and you only have this much of an inventory of arms, you know, that's only going to get you for so long. Mm -hmm. And then as the spring training wears on, they'll start stretching out players and we'll get more and more, you know, innings out of our players. So, mm -hmm. but initially it's probably going to be seven inning games. You know, and, and a lot of people don't know that, but I think that the whole experience, Bob, and I'm going to kind of circle back, um, and then I'm going to circle back in, in a different direction. But when fans come in, the experience is what they're after. Yeah, baseball's going on, hot dogs are being sold, uh, strawberry shortcake being sold, all of this type of stuff. That experience is going to be the same. Oh, sure. Yeah, yeah. It's like I say, we'll have people up on the berm. We're going to have people on the runway all through the stands in the suite areas, and the party areas. Yes, we'll have fans all in the stands again and that excitement and the souvenir stand being open and the guy yelling when you walk in, programs, programs, you know, whatever. <laughs> he's going to be right there. None of that's going to change, whatever. So we're really excited about it. We're, we're not going to do temperature checks, but we are going to do the normal where you have to empty your pockets and that yeah. type of thing when you come in. And we're going to ask fans to please wear your, your, your uh, mask 
as you enter and uh, you know to your seat. Uh, we'll still have out in the parking lot. We're still going to have uh, six seat golf carts running all through the parking lot, picking up fans and, and bringing them to the front gate. We're going to, you know, those things aren't going to change. Whatever we're going to make the experience as as pleasurable as it could possibly be, and keeping everything the same, just with a few changes that people want us to do because people do want to feel safe right now, yeah. and that's the most important thing. Definitely. Well, you know, Sam, one of the things I know you're interested in is uh, probably something that's not on a whole lot of our viewers' radar. And it's a new park in Lakeland. And, and Bob, tell us a little bit about um, Lake Crago. And it's, I, I'm not sure if it's called Lake Crago no. Park or yes, Recreation so Area, but um, this is like something special. This is really, really unique. Lake Crago turned out extremely good. I thought it would be good. It's even better than what we, what we anticipated, to be honest with you. We started with the first phase of building a dog park with a restroom mm -hmm. and a boat ramp that went into Little Lake Crago. It, you go up and you go back down to through a canal and then it feeds the Lake Parker Park. Mm -hmm. It actually feeds the seven other lakes in that area, which is really kind of cool. The view is unbelievable, drop dead gorgeous from the back of the building looking out. Mm -hmm. It's gorgeous. And we built a 12,000 plus building there with a boathouse. We're going to have a vendor come in. We're working with them now. So we'll have, uh, you can rent a kayak canoe. They're going to have little tours and things that they do in the outdoors. And, but the thing about it is, is that it, there is incredible meeting spaces, uh, incredible. We have a larger room that has a catering kitchen that you can, you can handle up to 120 people easily with, with round tables. And, but we maximize the view. We wrapped the building, we did it all in glass. We put an amphitheater out there. So your event can spill over to the outdoors with that gorgeous view. So you don't lose that. It, there's so much potential with it, with programming and also with rentals being so close to I-4. It's lake, located on Lakeland Hills Boulevard. It's just down the street from Tigertown. It's right next to the Hollis Cancer Center. Mm -hmm. And it's just a gorgeous building. I mean, that's all I can say. Uh, the early reviews we've got of people renting it, coming to look at it, enjoying it. We have a large dock that's on the lake. We get people out there every day that bring their lounge chair and just sit there and fish you know, past the time because the, the breeze that comes off that lake is just, I don't care if it's 90 degrees outside, it's unbelievable, you know, the breeze that comes off the lake and how neat it is. But the view is just, is just gorgeous. I mean, it's the only way I can express it. Well, so much stuff going on in the city of Lakeland. If you do want more information, the Lakeland website is lakeland.gov, correct? Yes, yes, lakelandgov.net. Thank yep. you very much. Lakelandgov.net. Make sure you check that out. Bob, thanks so much for joining us. Thanks and, for the invite. Well, and, and the Packers, <laughs> we'll, the pack I'm will be back next I'm year. Bitter. I'm bitter. I'm bitter. I can't get over it. I can't get over it. Whatever. But you and I are both hurting together. Oh my gosh! Did I take some ribbing? Unbelievable. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll move on. To, we'll move on to our next uh, spot in the show. And again, Bob, thanks so much. And City of Lakeland, fantastic partners. Thank you so much. And you're about to get the next guy up. Danny Walker is the best wrestling coach ever. Well, so you'll look forward to that interview. Before we get to uh, Mr. Danny Walker, we do have some footage from the Florida High School Activities. You know, I should just say FHSAA because everybody knows what that is. But it's from the Girls State Basketball Championships from last year. Yes, that's coming up real, real soon. Check it out, everybody. <laughs> Hank and Mark will be back after this. <laughs> you know, dementia is a horrible thing. Stick around, everybody. <laughs> our girls tournament is six days long we start on a Monday we have uh, six games on Monday 
then a championship game on Tuesday. We repeat for three different classifications on Wednesday and Thursday, and we come back Friday and Saturday. So the tournament itself is six complete days long. We start again early on Monday morning and go all the way through Saturday night. The Florida High School Athletic Association sponsors the girls' state basketball championship here in Lakeland each and every year. Uh, teams qualify to come to the state championship by winning a district and regional or sectional game. We have nine different classifications this year, 1A rural through 9A, four teams from each classification. So we have 36 teams uh, playing here in 27 different games in a, a fantastic tournament that Holt County and Lakeland do a fantastic job hosting us. The RP Funding Center and Lakeland have been hosting our tournament for quite some time now. Here in the state of Florida, we have a very big state, as you quite know. It's over 900 miles from Pensacola to Key West. We try to find a central location whenever we possibly can, and Lakeland happens to fit the bill for that. The RP Funding Center is a good venue. There's a seating capacity for, I think, seven or eight, perhaps 9,000 people. Uh, our fans enjoy coming here. Uh, the, the host committee has done a wonderful job having us here, and so we're very pleased to be here in Lakeland. For all the participants who come here, I know they are very excited to be able to represent their school. I had the opportunity when I was in high school to go to a state championship game also, and I'll never forget that experience. When our girls or boys leave a state championship, they will have a hope, fond memories of the experience that they've had, and certainly it helps them grow to be young and mature, or more mature young adults. I really get a charge out of watching our student athletes play. It really doesn't matter to me whether it's girls sports or boys sports. I think educational based athletics is a fantastic opportunity for young people to grow and mature. I have two daughters, both of them are athletes. I was an athlete, my wife was an athlete. We absolutely love the game and it's a fantastic opportunity for fans, for student athletes and for anyone to participate in that educational athletic experience. Welcome back to segment number two. Mark Jackson here along with my new co-host, Mr. Sam there we go. Baker. <laughs> you know, we came out of segment number one and I just like, I just had a brain freeze. And it's I just it was like, I don't know what the heck's going on here. You know, just. I'm breaking your routine. That's what it is. Well, you, just, you know, sometimes I get Neil, sometimes I get Hank, and most of the time Hank. But now we've got, we had to bring up, you know, it's youth and age. <laughs> youth <laughs> and age. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So here, here we are with segment number two of Sports Central, everybody. Thanks so much for joining us, and uh, great time with Bob Donahue. Oh, you yeah. know, we could have uh, done a whole hour show with him and, and probably half of it on the Green Bay Packers. But uh, <laughs> we're both big Packer fans. And, you know, in fact, well, you go ahead and do our, our special thank you. Yeah, before we get too far, Saybridge Suites want to thank them uh, so much for, for sponsoring this uh, this segment of Sports Central. What I would have liked to have seen, though, is Danny and Bob on no. the same segment. <laughs> that would have been, been That would have been a, a show to watch. <laughs> that could have been trouble. <laughs> yeah, it's just like throwing out a ball at, at recess for a bunch of kindergartners. You know, just give it to them, and they're just going to run around. Uh -huh. That's all we'd have to do. More than likely, a fight will break out, and you don't want that. So. <laughs> no, no. We'll, uh, we'll leave that Especially one Especially not with Danny uh, in here. Well, <laughs> You know, one of the things, everybody, that uh, we're so proud of here in Polk County, you know, and I have some uh, lineage to that, I guess, because I wrestled uh, in high school, part of it at least, until I felt that uh, freestyle snow skiing was a lot more fun. But uh, wrestling's a big deal. It's a big deal in the Olympics. It's a big deal here in the state of Florida and in Polk County. We just happen to have one of the most successful wrestling coaches in the state's history at Lake Gibson, and uh, we're proud to have him on the show today. Who is that? That's Danny Walker. I appreciate you guys having me, and uh, you know, it's it's 
It's a time. It's been a tough year. Uh, we didn't know if we were going to have a wrestling season, but the fact that I'm sitting here and we've already finished our dual team uh, state tournament, now we're heading into our individually bracketed tournament portion with our district starting tomorrow. Uh, it means a lot just being on the show, and I greatly appreciate it. Well. You know, Danny, one of the things that uh, you know, you've got a history and now establishing a legacy, it took you 17 years yes. to get your first state championships. Uh, they seem to be coming f more frequently now. Um, they might be coming more frequently, but they're not as, they're just as tough. Um, yeah. You know, somebody, just after we won our dual team state tournament a couple of weeks ago, somebody came to me and said, are you ever going to have an easy one? And I said, I don't think so. I mean, I, I thought you know that they were going to get easier as time went on but they haven't they just continue to get tougher uh, i think a lot of it is because we've graduated uh three big classes in a row so that's sort of where we're, we're at with that situation but you know the fact that we do keep winning them says a lot about our program it says a lot about our administration lake gibson high school uh it says a lot about our parent support system so without them none of it would be possible but uh, they are coming frequently. I hope to get another one in a few weeks, but uh, we'll, we'll see what happens. It's going to be tough. Oh, yeah, we're definitely hoping that you, you get another one. But yeah. like you said, it's just a testament because the guys that you've graduated over the past few years, multiple state championship yes. winners, you know, Ashton Habil yes. going off to wrestling college. I mean, it, it, but the good thing is you've had, uh, you know, other guys that have stepped up and filled that role and, and been those players at least. You know, can you talk about at least uh, one of the big ones uh, recently too, Brendan Abden and, yes. and his state championships he's won in the past years? You know, uh, you know, we graduated, uh, you know, within the last two years, we've graduated, I think, 13 guys uh, and that was probably the thing that made it more special this last one that we just won was because when you went through the lineup over 50 percent of your team was new wrestlers that that came in um, so that was that was a big thing they, they, they weren't participating on the team last year uh, they've been waiting a lot of them have been waiting in the JV team just waiting their their turn waiting their turn um, and they they stepped up uh, Brendan Abden has been that that kid that sort of took the leadership role a little bit and ran with it because all he's been waiting you know he's been behind the ashton and shannon Hanna and and all those guys angel hernandez you know connor williams and now these guys have graduated and now he's he's the big dog mm -hmm. he's the big dog and you know he started out the year ranked 17th in the country um he's fell down a little bit from that because of we didn't get as much time as to train during the off season as we normally would but he's still like i said he's undefeated he's he's kicking butt right now he's ranked number one in the state um, talking to a lot of colleges and uh, you know that's also a good thing because these college coaches are all seeing also seeing what other Lake Gibson wrestlers are doing also yeah and and you you talk about college and, and everything and that's that's obviously that's a huge emphasis in in any you know their uh, Hank always says it on here but they're their students first and then their athletes yes. but I know a big uh, uh, accomplishment that you just uh, all just announced at least yeah. the team GPA is yes. so high I mean that's been a, obviously a huge accomplishment for you all. That is, um, that's been something that we've been preaching because every time a college coach calls me, uh, I'm sure you could verify this from any other coach that you have coming here. The first thing they ask is, how's this GPA? Um, and it's so heartbreaking when kids don't have that GPA and you're like, well, coach, he's got a 2.5, 2.6. Well, in a lot of eyes, a 2.5 and a 2.6, it's, it's good, it's satisfactory, it gets you through. But it's not what these college coaches are looking mm -hmm. for. They're looking for 3.0, 3.0, above, you know, 3.5. Um, you really got a 3.5 really will pique a coach's interest. But anything higher than that, um, it'll, you'll start getting more attention. But that's something that we really do pride, pride ourselves on. And this young group that we have came in, this freshman group of, I got an amazing group of freshmen, all their GPAs are pretty much over a 4.0 right now. So it, it's an amazing accomplishment. Looking forward to it because usually we have to pull the grades throughout the year. We haven't had to do that one time this year. Wow. It's been great. That's yeah, amazing. Great. That's, well, what was it, 3.51? Mm -hmm. um, yep. I think you told me is, uh, or whatever, is the average. Yes, that's the overall team GPA. Which is really high. It is. It you, is. You, you might expect that, you know, the old mindset that, well, the musicians and, the, you know, all those folks. No. You know, the athletes are, high, are higher. And the fortunate thing, I have an opportunity to uh, be part of the Ledgers team mm -hmm. for the Silver Garlands. Mm -hmm. And I see these kids come through in athletics. Yes. 4.0, 4, you know, upper 3 point something. It's, it's really, really incredible. Well, you know, a lot of the kids don't understand what intrigues a college coach more is because they're not going to have to spend all their athletic money 
on the athlete because they're going to be able to save some of the athletic money for another athlete because they're going to be able to get so much academic money. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's something we preach with my daughter, you know, as far as her volleyball also. So, I mean, it, it's a good thing, and I'm just glad these kids are really taking, taking it under belt. Yeah, just more of a, a personal question, but uh, it's, it's part of the story, part mm -hmm. of your story, that, uh, you know, successful wrestling coach, how did that all start? Were you a wrestler in high school? Did you go, you know, did you wrestle in college? I mean, where do you get that expertise? Well, you know, it's it's a funny story. It's uh, probably might take up the whole show, but <laughs> I graduated Auburn, uh, from Auburndale High School in 1995, and I was actually a better baseball player. I played for Randy Clark uh, at Auburndale High School, and I went into the wrestling room a few times, and uh, for those of you who don't know, Arbordale High School was a perennial powerhouse with Bob Hartley, Coach Veal, That's who it was. all those guys. Yeah. And I was like, oh my goodness, these guys are amazing and they're just beating the crap out of me and I can go to baseball and I was a really good baseball player. So I decided to stick with baseball through high school. Well, when I graduated, Lake Region High School opened up and my brother got transferred, uh, rezoned to go to Lake Region. And Coach Chris Hayward, he moved here from Illinois. Mm -hmm. Um, and he took over the program at Lake Region. So I was always around at my brother's functions and stuff. And he came up to me one day, he goes, Hey, you know, would you like to be my JV coach? This was after the first year at Lake Region. And I said, man, I just don't have enough, you know, knowledge. And he said, he goes, you just come train with me for the summer. And he said, and we'll start traveling the country. So basically long story short, I went over there, started training. Um, after about three years of training over there with him, uh, I started wrestling in college in open tournaments, going up to North Carolina, uh, South Carolina, places like that, wrestling in open tournaments. Because back in, back in the day, you could just wrestle in an open tournament, whether you were in college or not. Mm -hmm. um, now they have a limit on high school kids. High school kids can't reg register and wrestle in open tournaments. So I just started wrestling there, uh, traveled on the national team a couple times as a coach. Um, I took every opportunity I could to learn. Mm -hmm. suck up everything, traveled everywhere I could go in the country, traveled with the best coaches, shadowed the best coaches, and then the opportunity came to get the job at Lake Gibson High School. Um, I took it, and the rest is history. I just ran with it. I never stopped learning, never stopped sucking it up, and I mean, it's the one thing that probably changed my life um, as a youth, um, because taking that opportunity to be a part of the wrestling community uh, really showed me that I was on the wrong path and, and hanging with the wrong people completely changed my life, turned me around, and it's, it's been amazing. It's been amazing. It's a great, you know, it's, it's a great sport, and there's, there's been a lot of people that have either uh, come up through or have come through Polk County yes. as wrestlers. I uh, remember Steve Combs yes. was a, you remember him? Yep. He was a silver medalist in, uh, in the Olympics, and, you know, just came fraction, worked his whole life, and ended up at supposed to win a gold medal but he ended up with a silver yeah. medal and you know I know he provided a lot of coaching and input here and while he was still here but uh, in fact he was the executive director of USA wrestling for years yes. he was, you know great great guy and so uh, Polk County does have a long legacy uh, of people that have some tie to the sport yes. and mm -hmm. so you're yes. continuing to carry that on that's all really great stuff and really appreciate your Thank time you. Thank you. Thank oh. you very much. And I best of luck. It. Hope you guys. Um, <laughs> I, I think I can say that. Hope you guys kick some butt in uh, in a week or so. And fingers take, crossed. Take I got a couple more fingers. I'd like to fill up with a couple more rings. Hey, we're looking forward to <laughs> it yeah, too. Yeah, take them down. Yeah, <laughs> the, the, the 17 year deal wasn't a, wasn't as uh, impressive as the most recent. So yeah. that's great. All right. Thank you so much, guys. Okay, Thank you. you bet. Well, everybody, we have kind of an interesting segment coming up for you, and uh, you know it's. Hang on to your seats, if you will. We actually have four different videos. Uh, one of them is of a longtime friend, and, and many of you that are that are fans of Sports Central, both radio and TV, remember Frank Tiano, and he is the godfather of uh, radio-controlled jets and uh, all the kind of radio-controlled uh, uh, aviation and competition, and moved from West Palm to Polk County at uh, our urging and just developed a huge following and uh, national world championship events. We're so happy to, to do a little tribute. Frank passed away, unfortunately, a great friend of, of Polk County Sports Marketing and Polk County. We also have uh, a, uh, some footage from, pro and, and, okay, I have no idea what this is about, okay? I asked some questions. There's a place called Proctor's 
goat farm, and it doesn't mean greatest of all time. I'm talking about goats with four legs, okay, that run around and, and stuff like that. Pretty cool place. So we got some footage from there. It's the Be Sweet campaign, and then our fourth is always one of my favorites, and that's the Athlete Spotlight. It's the Bartow cheerleading team, and they have accomplished, uh, I think, more so than much, any yeah. Yeah, high school in, in uh, Polk County. Glad to see them. So stick around for that exciting package. Actually, four of them. Mark and this guy here, Sam Baker, not Hank Longo. We'll be back right after this. for being sweet. Thank you for being sweet.
thank you for being sweet. When you follow the five safety steps to slow the spread of COVID-19, you're not only protecting yourself, but you're protecting the heart and soul of Polk County, Florida's sweetest spot. We got 300 radio control jets, professional grade radio control jets, not little toys. And guys coming from all over the world for this fly-in. It's like the sun and fun in miniature. Um, they're all powered by legitimate, true, real turbine engines that have been shrunk. Uh, instead of, you know, being this big around and that long, they're this big around and that long. And they put out anywhere from between 15 and 60 pounds of thrust. Some of the airplanes here are capable of speeds at 300 miles an hour, but we are governed by the Academy of Model Aeronautics, uh, uh, an organization we all have to belong to. We are governed at 200. We actually have a special device on board that limits the airplane to 200 miles an hour. So what you're seeing here, when these guys are going by, they're at, right at 200 miles an hour. Uh, the average size here is probably around 80 to 90 inches in wingspan and maybe 110 inches in length. Average weight, probably 40 pounds. Average cost, turnkey, on the field, ready to rock and roll, $15,000. Are all of them $15,000? No. Some of them here, the smaller ones, maybe a total investment of maybe $7,000. On the upper end, we have some here that are in the 35 and $40,000 bracket. One of, our, one of our dear friends that comes back year after year, Mr. Frank Tiano with Florida Jets. And uh, Frank, always great having you on the show. And you're back at it again with another fantastic radio controlled event. Yes, thank you. Other than that field, this is my second favorite place to be, right here. Oh, I love this place. Wonderful. We love what, having the you studio on the show. or being with us? Just I like guys. hanging with you. Oh, yeah. 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 A couple of Italian too guys so tell busy. stories. Yeah, I just <laughs> hang out a lot. Too much so busy. <laughs> anyway, yeah, coming up uh, next next week. Yeah, uh, something new. Uh, we have a. It's Saturday to Saturday now instead of Wednesday through Saturday. Wow. And the first four days, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, uh, is called Red Flag. Um, it's in a jet aerobatic competition. Okay. So instead of a fly-in, like Sun and Fun's a fly-in where right. guys just come and enjoy themselves, like Florida Jets is, this is a regimented, you know, they have certain kinds of maneuvers they have to do, and, and uh, they're incredible to watch because they are able to have a power uh, ratio of better than one to one, so they can hover. So you see a jet airplane come across the field like this, go like this, and stop. Oh my and God! Go up vertical like well, this. Here, this that's, kind of, this that's picture, what he's doing. If you can get in on this picture, this kind of shows you it's exactly, exactly what he's doing. What uh, is this? The camera, Russell? Or yeah, oh, there we go. Yeah. So and that's that. red flag, and uh, so that starts on uh, March seventeenth. Whatever Saturday yeah, is seventeenth, yeah. and then the Florida Jets is Start, the twenty-first, which the is a Wednesday. Wednesday, and then Florida Jets is just uh, it's about two hundred guys <laughs> from all over the world. A fly-in. And they, it's a fly-in. They just come and enjoy themselves and they, a lot of vendors showing what, what's new. Mm -hmm. They release it at our event because it's, it's spring. Just, it's the first one of the year. Yeah. So they can't wait to show their new stuff, you know, and uh, like engine manufacturers like. Yeah, let's talk about this engine. If uh, once again, if we can get in on this and Frank, you can kind of work us through this. This is just like a regular jet engine that would be on any other this jet is, airplane, just a little is smaller. Exactly. It's, it's a, 
That's right. It's not a toy airplane motor. It is a, no kidding, turbine engine. A jet turbo engine. Really? It's just the parts are smaller. So, and then what about this little uh, on the front there? That looks kind of That neat. is called a FOD. A FOD. Yes. Okay. Foreign object deflector. A foreign object because, deflector. Because. Because you don't want bugs and stuff getting in there. Because you don't want a rock to get in there oh my while it's God. turning at 120,000 RPMs into uh, these veins. Here, show it that way so they can. The little veins. Can you see them? The little veins here? That's what they're called, veins. Like an airliner, you have a bird strike. Right. The bird enters here. The this thing is turning like crazy. The bird does not compress fast enough, so it wipes these out. This then spins too fast. Hot air gets back into the chamber and, up the and explodes. Well, let's oh, talk wow. about. So you have this engine. It's much like a, a regular engine. It is. A, yes. An airplane. Yep. Um, First, I want to find out what is the cost of one of these these airplanes, and how far away are they flying? So, if you do have some kind of obviously you have the protection, so if you have something go wrong, you want to be able to find it. Of so course. Talk about all that. Well, <laughs> I can make that's actually a good question, and I can be I can actually condense that. To, I know exactly what you're saying. First of all, this is for when it's on the ground, pretty much. You don't pick up a rock off the runway, foreign right. object. Right. You know. Okay. Um, Radio-controlled airplanes are only fun to fly when you can see them. There's no benefit in flying it so far away you can't see them. Right? Yeah. So we always fly them within a few hundred feet of ourselves okay. in distance, l l lateral distance. And we never fly them more than a couple hundred feet above us because, again, you if it's like, them. no, you want to have the enjoyment like an RC car. You wouldn't fly, drive it on the guy's block next, down the street. You right. So same thing. The minimum weight is 35 pounds, maximum weight 100 pounds. So we'll have airplanes here that are approximately uh, 16 or 17 feet of wingspan, perhaps larger than your kid's room, and that weigh 100 pounds, powered by uh, usually some kind of a modified industrial chainsaw gasoline type engine. Probably going to be about 80 pilots, and they all bring at least two airplanes. So we'll probably have 150 to 175 airplanes. It is the best radio-controlled jets. Um, yeah, I think that's what I can what I yeah, can say. And are. airplanes, airplanes yeah. uh, in the world is right here at the Lakeland Linder Airport. And the guy that has put this all together actually moved up from West Palm to be in the aviation capital of Florida, and that is. Uh, Polk County, Lakeland Regional Airport, and of course, home to Sun and Fun and everything yeah. else. Mr. Frank Tiano, uh, been with us a long time, great guy. There's nobody who knows more about this sport than, than he does. And Frank, it's an honor and a pleasure to have you with us today. Again, one of our favorite guests to just jump in and keep visit talking. Us when it's you always can. nice to hear you. Just keep, us, keep <laughs> rattling on all these nice things about you. Anything know? else you want to say? <laughs> <laughs> well, Frank, you've got a big event coming up May 1st through the 5th. Uh, five-day event and it's uh, always really really impressive that you know and what really I don't know I guess surprises a lot of people when when they talk to me about this are the number of people that come out not only to participate but just to watch I mean this is cool stuff yeah it's um, it, it's it's interesting <clears throat> to see or to hear the comments from people who have never seen it before uh, men women young old uh, it's like wow I never knew this existed you know, people think of model airplanes as um, something with a string on them. You go round and round and fall down and go boom, being busy. Yeah. Know? And then they see these things the size of a car, 
you know, that that performed like just like a full size airplane, and uh, they're they're in awe. Yeah. You know, you you hit that one right on the head when you said that they are the size of a car. And when you think of a radio controlled airplane, you know, if you're in a hobby store, you're seeing them in a box about this big, you know, and flying them around in your backyard. But when they're as big as a car uh, and you see them flying, it's almost, it's, it's hard to tell that they're not a real jet airplane. And it's the jets mostly that get that big, aren't they? Yeah, uh, this year for the f first or second time, we will have some um, propeller driven airplanes that are larger than the jets we've had in the past. We have a couple of them coming that are one half the size of the full size airplane. Oh my so wow. they're gonna be quite large, quite heavy, mm -hmm. very powerful, um, some of them with two engines. Uh, it's gonna be interesting. a lot of mental toughness to be here really just because there's always competition there's always someone like killing after your title there's always someone that wants to be better than you and being in a school athlete like you really have to keep your grades up and then you have practices three days three four days a week like you really have to keep your time like sorted out time management is like a really big thing that coach always gets on us about but um it's really just you have to be tough mentally physically and just work through it. Uh, I think this program prepares you pretty much for everything in life. She teaches you how to manage your time pretty well, um, how to budget, how to you know manage going to from cheer to a basketball game, or from in my case, I work on the side too. I manage how to work, go from practice to work, go from work to basketball games and competitions, and how to manage my schedule that way, especially with homework involved. So in my time here at Bartow, I've won, we've won two state championships, uh, three national championships, and two world championships. And it really like helps, it, I really like how they invited me in here. Like I never like, like pushed myself onto it and like they always helped me to do what I wanted to do. Like I, they helped me, I didn't help them, you know, <laughs> to get what we did. And, it was just amazing what the outcome was. Average day for me is I wake up and I just ready to come in here and put in that work and usually when you put in the work you're you're wanting to have a good payout from the work and with that good payout brings a lot of like good things to you and like just putting in that hard work you reach for something that's like almost that you're almost to that point and then once you get to that point, you're like, okay, this hard work actually paid off and like, I understand why I put in this work. And it's more of a self, it's a self-reflecting kind of thing because you see how much you put in the beginning and from where that, where you started at the beginning and it, you look at where you are now type thing. This community is a, it's a, it's a, a great program. Um, there's nothing I wouldn't like, 
there's no bad comments about this program. It's a fantastic program. Everybody here is, is with you. They support you. They're, they're gonna help you through like your tough times. They're gonna, you know, congratulate you through your, like your best times, your winning times. And the community is there to the, back you up and like they're always there for you. And I would say like if anybody out there is in the community and, and would like to do this or, or smaller kids looking up, I would say do it because you're gonna have the best time of your life. And Welcome back to segment number four of Sports Central, everybody. Mark Jackson here, and to my right, Mr. Sam Baker, now an experienced seasoned veteran of Sports Central. I know, right? I feel like I can I could do this uh, do this from now on, I guess. Why not? <laughs> what did I just sign up <laughs> well, for? We better, no yeah, we'll have to talk to Hank about that <laughs> one. But, uh, anyway, go ahead. Well, thank you so much again to, to Holiday Inn and Winter Haven for, uh, for sponsoring this segment of Sports Central. Couldn't do it without our partners. Uh, yeah. Another one of our partners, BSN and Under Armour, as you can always see. You're all decked out I, in I, Under Armour. I, I have to be. I have to be. I love it. I'm glad yes. that uh, we have this great partnership with uh, the fantastic partners at BSN Sports. Yeah, BSN, and, and uh, I'm a big fan of Under Armour as well because very uh, pro-American, uh, Pro-U.S. military, um, they do they do a lot of altruistic things and the great projects that uh, I personally support and uh, really like what they stand for. So uh, anyway, that's uh, that's it with uh, Under Armour and BSN. Yeah, Pre exactly. appreciate them both. Definitely. Well, hey, we had Bob Donahue on here to talk about. Uh, at least in our first segment, to talk about what's going on in the city of Lake and primarily the Tigers and uh, the new Lake Crago Park. We're going to drill down a little bit more into the Tigers situation. Um, you know, it, it was uh, really an interesting scenario how things unfolded this spring. I was talking to uh, Polk County uh, County Manager uh, Bill Beasley about this uh, maybe a month ago and how uncertain things were in Major League Baseball. Um, and, and throughout that discussion, it was uh, really focused on what was happening in Arizona and then the possibility of, of maybe getting some Arizona teams here if indeed some of the uh, Arizona cities prevailed and they weren't going to let them play spring or have spring training there. That did not work out, but uh, uh, the bottom line is here in Florida in the Grapefruit League, the model that Governor DeSantis has established is, is, is a great model. Mm -hmm. You know, they got in California, you got a lockdown state, and uh, the results are, are worse than Florida where everything's open, people have jobs, and the economy is moving. So hats off to the Polk County Board of County Commission following that, uh, that philosophy and mantra, and, and I think that's, that's been good for us. And along those lines, with a long way to segue into <laughs> what is the schedule for the Tigers? Well, so... Uh Oh, sorry. No, go right ahead. Yeah, no, we have uh, at least uh, five games at least before our next show. Uh, but uh, kick it off, the first game of the season will be February 28th against the Phillies at 105. Majority of their games are actually at 105 yep. this year. And they changed up the, the format to where uh, they'll be in pods, like Bob was mentioning earlier. The teams will be in pods. In yes. other words, the Phillies, the Blue Jays, the Yankees, and the Tigers will be in that pod. Yep. There will be a little bit of interpod play between the three pods that have been created. I think they'll play the Rays and uh, I believe the Orioles and the Pirates. Oh, and the Pirates, and yeah. Possibly the and possibly the Pirates. They'll be uh, they went from 34 games down to 28 games, so there'll be fewer total, uh, roughly 15 home games. And but those things are going to change, folks. They ju they just are. So you got to go to the Tigers website and find out what's happening. But it's uh, what do we have here, Sam, in terms of uh, the lineup, at least the first uh, the first week. So first week we'll have on the 28th we have the Phillies and the third we on uh, March 3rd we have the Phillies again uh, March 4th and 7th we will see the Toronto uh, Blue Jays and then on the 9th we'll see the Yankees. So it's a little bit different format but the experience 
is going to be the same. Just a few less people in the stands. And I'm sure you're going to have a great time. And, you know, it's always a great time with the Tigers. It's Absolutely. Just 85 years, uh, you know, we've been really fortunate. Well, Sam, you know, r right on the heels or during that, we have one of uh, our marquee events, if you want to call it that, the Florida uh, High School Basketball, both boys and girls, right here in Polk County at the RP Funding Center. Yeah, we are, at this moment, we are just a week away now from uh, the Girls State Basketball Championships. I uh, still have one team still vying for a, for a state championship, and that's Winter Haven Girls Basketball. Uh, but that will start actually February 24th and move into the 27th with that state championship game on the 27th um, at the RP Funding Center with uh, COVID-19 uh, safety guidelines. Uh, and you can purchase tickets to, uh, to attend if you purchase them beforehand. It's $10. Purchase them at the gate, $13. Um, but everything will, uh, it will be just a fantastic uh, event uh, for people to get out and see and hopefully Polk County will take home another, uh, another state championship. Absolutely. No, that's for the, that's for the girls. What, about, the what girls. about for the boys that follows? Yep. And just another week later, mm -hmm. we'll have the boys. Uh, multiple teams are still playing uh, right now, I believe in the districts or rather regionals. Uh, but we still have Auburndale, Bartow, uh, McKeel, uh, Discovery, all these teams uh, still still fighting for, for a state championship. Still alive. Still alive, waiting for it, uh, and, and Bartow hoping a repeat, actually. Uh, so we're, we're really pulling for a, for a home team championship again. Did you, uh, uh, or are you looking forward to going to a few games and rooting on the home team? Absolutely. I got a chance to see Bartow win it last year in yeah. a, a wild game. Uh, ended up winning it in overtime, and it just... It was so fun to see, and 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 it it just felt like it felt like nothing I'd ever seen before. Just high school basketball and NRP, uh, where you know the home team show the, the the home city just shows up to to support Bartow and people from every city, Lakeland, uh, you know, uh, Winter Haven, all showed up because you know you, you root for your own in Polk County. Well, well we take care of all in here yep. in Polk County, and that's that's the way it should be. Well, that's that's all great stuff. I'm, you know, looking forward to that myself. We really need to uh, see what we can do to get wrestling back here as well. Oh, absolutely. Well, Danny, Especially have uh, a Danny, Danny and everybody yeah. here win another one. Well, the uh, this is an annual event, and uh, we all know and appreciate Sheriff Grady Judd. I just saw him yesterday, and he was out at Lake Myrtle, believe it or not. And uh, there's a, a charity event that he has, Sam, and uh, there's a lot of, you know, great prizes, and it's held out at the Clear Springs Ranch. Uh, which is just west of Bartow off of Highway 6. It's really easy to get to, and it's really a fun event. It's uh, fun for the, actually, for the en entire family. Yeah. You know, and you can just go around. If, if you have a Jeep, you don't need a Jeep, but uh, you can go out there and just be a spectator. Yeah, and, and spectators are free, and they encourage anybody to come out there February 26th through the 28th is uh, that Jeeping with Judd event. And like you said, there's so much there for anyone, even without a Jeep, uh, out there, you go take on uh, take the jeeps down ten different trails, but uh, it's definitely an event you have to see. Well, we have somebody to thank and uh, and sort of a repeat thank you, but we appreciate it. We absolutely appreciate Hampton and Lakeside, the Lake Myrtle Center for Advanced Dentistry, Hilton Garden Inn of Lakeland, Harborside Restaurant in Winter Haven, and Jimmy John's Gourmet Sandwiches with two uh, two locations in Lakeland. Really? Yeah, one on South Florida Avenue and the other in downtown Lakeland. I think there might be one in Winter Haven too on, on 17, I believe. Well, yeah, well, we we are with uh, the Jimmy Johns over there in Lakeland, at least we are. But okay, love Jimmy Johns. Glad somebody filled me <laughs> in on these uh, these wonderful details. We appreciate Jimmy Johns for for all they do. And and uh, you know, Sam, if if you're some people have a face for TV, some have a face for radio. Some have a face for everything. Uh -huh. Okay, well, now you can see Sam, who is on radio. Now he's on, uh, he's on Sports Central TV. But don't forget our sister show on radio, WLKF, uh, 1430 AM and FM. Uh, and 96.7 FM. 96.7 FM, 5 to 6 o'clock every Thursday. Make sure you check that out, and you can see Sam on that. Well, everybody, our next live show is March 5th. And uh, looking forward to that. A lot of exciting action coming up. We'll be well into baseball. And uh, don't forget, everybody, if you'd like more information about sports and sports and sport in Polk County, check out centralfloridasports.com. Thank you much, so much for joining us. This is Mark Jackson. For Sam Baker, we'll see you again next time.